Shiny Pokemon are alternate colorations of existing Pokemon that are extremely rare. For example, this is what a regular Charizard looks like, and this is what a Shiny Charizard looks like. A ton of people around the world, including myself, enjoy hunting for these Shiny Pokemon. However, as I said before, they are extremely rare. It depends on the game, however, in the game I am playing, the odds are about 1 in 1365. So out of 1365 Pokemon, on average one will be shiny. Most shiny hunters end up sitting in front of their consoles for hours, resetting over and over again to hopefully get a shiny. However, I wanted to do it a bit differently. Shiny hunting is an extremely repetitive process because you have to press the same buttons over and over again every single reset while hoping the Pokemon is shiny. For example, here is the process for trying to get the shiny Pokemon I want, Garatina. Noticing this, I tried to find a way to automate it, considering the repetitiveness. There are some existing solutions, however, most of them require some sort of extra hardware you have to buy, and I just wanted to do it with the things that I already owned. To start with, I had to find a way to control my 2DS using my computer. Unfortunately, there are no native ways I could find to do this on the 2DS, so I ended up installing a custom firmware called Luma 3DS on my brother's console. This custom firmware allows me to connect external controllers to interact with the DS. At this point, I was able to control my device through my computer using a virtual Xbox controller I set up. And now I had to figure out how to actually detect a shiny Pokemon on the console through my computer. My first idea was to take advantage of a screen capturing software I installed called Snickerstream. The software allowed me to display the screen of the 2DS directly on my computer. I would then write a Python script that detected when the colors were different than normal. However, there was a big issue. For some reason, I was unable to connect an external controller and stream the screen of the 2DS to my computer at the same time. This was the error I got. After researching a bit, this issue did not seem too common. However, I think this happened because the custom firmware uses loopholes in the 2DS's software to allow any of these custom actions in the first place. And so, there probably aren't many ways to output information wirelessly from the console. So, through the loopholes used, only one stream of information can be sent at a time out of the controller or the screen. Regardless of my hypothesis, I had to come up with a solution. After a little bit of brainstorming, I realized there is another way to detect shinies, the sparkle. Whenever a shiny is found in the game, a short animation plays with a distinct sparkling sound to notify players that it is not a regular Pokemon. I decided to take advantage of this, and rather than detect the alternate coloration, I could use the audio of the sparkling sound. Luckily, the 2DS natively supports audio recording. This is done by taking a 3.5mm male-to-male audio cable and plugging one end into the headphone slot in the 2DS and the other end into the microphone slot of your computer. Then, the audio from your game acts as if it is coming out of the microphone of your computer. At this point, I had all the tools I needed to start the hunt, but I still needed to write the script that actually detected whether or not the Pokemon was shiny. I went with Python, because that is the language I'm most familiar with, and I got to work. To control the game, the script would input keys using Python library Pi Auto GUI that would correspond to buttons on the virtual Xbox controller that is connected to the console. To actually record the audio, however, I did use a pretty inefficient method. I could have used an external library that directly records audio from the microphone. However, for some reason, I thought it would be a better idea to use the GUI library I installed previously to simply automatically record the file through Audacity. This is the first thing I would change if I ever did this project again. To start with, I wrote a few functions signifying each button to improve the readability of the code and help me better understand what exactly was happening during each part of the script. Then I created a loop that would 1. Reset the game, 2. Go through the menus, 3. Fly to the rift thing in the sky, and 4. Begin the encounter with the Pokemon. At this point, the script will wait a very specific amount of time, the amount of time it takes when the shiny sparkles would show up, about 400 frames, and then record audio for about 1.5 seconds, a bit longer than the actual duration of the sparkle sound. Then, using an external Python library for analyzing audio, Labrosa, 
we are able to compare the audio file just created to an audio file I created previously of the encounter with the Pokemon. Then, two spectrograms, visual representation of the audio frequencies, are created for each audio file. The spectrogram's peaks are compared to find the minimum distance between the two. To be completely honest, the math here goes a bit over my head, but I treated the return distance as a number that simply told me how different the two audio files are. This ended up working, and I found that when the distance is over 4000, again not really sure about the units, you can begin confidently saying that the audio files are distinct enough. At this point, if the audio files are not distinct enough, distance is less than 4000, then the loop will repeat, searching for the point where that shiny sparkle sound actually shows up. All that was left to do was to wait. I just had to run the script until I got the shiny. Unfortunately, I still ran into a few problems. Sometimes, randomly, the DS would disconnect from the computer for seemingly no reason, and no longer pick up inputs from the virtual Xbox controller. Also, for some reason, sometimes the game would crash when I came back to check if the Pokemon was shiny. I actually lost the shiny Garatina because of this. Twice. But I persisted, and despite the issues I faced, I did one day wake up, walk over to my computer, and see that shiny Garatina on the screen. Today, the shiny Garatina has been transferred up to the newest game, where I still use him today. Overall, I don't really recommend trying this if your main goal is to get a shiny Pokemon for yourself, since it really is not worth the effort, but I thought it was just a fun way to get me back into coding after a short hiatus. If I did this again, the main thing I would improve would be to make the script be able to run on the background on my computer. At the moment, by using the GUI library, the script relies on moving the mouse and clicking specific things in different windows, meaning I can't really use my computer while the script is running. That's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching.